All right, welcome back to the iOS developer channel, Max Codes. Go ahead and subscribe because today I'm going to show you how to use MapKit. All right, now I've been gone for a bit. You've probably been wondering where I've been at, and I've actually just been creating a ton of MapKit content. So you can see here what we're going to build in this app is we're basically just going to get a map on the screen and have it start tracking our location. It's super easy to do and I'm gonna show you how to do it in this one video. You're gonna have what you see here on the screen by the end of the video. So I highly encourage you watch this. Now, what MapKit is, is it's basically pretty self-explanatory, right? Map, it allows us to display map or satellite imagery directly from our user interface, okay? You can also do a lot of different custom things, which we don't do in this video, but I set you up so you can do all these things. Now, I'm going to be adding a few more MapKit videos on my channel throughout the week, but I want to let you know before we get started that I actually created an entire course on MapKit. And this is completely optional, but you're going to learn the most about MapKit in this course than you will any other course or on anybody's YouTube channel. I teach you everything about MapKit, and I'll also be updating this throughout the year. So this is a quality course and you can get it with the coupon developer underscore upgrade, which is linked in the description. Okay. Now let's just not talk about this and let's actually code. Okay. So what I want you to do is create a new Xcode project and let's go ahead and choose single view app. And I'm just going to call this map kit setup and I'm just going to hit finish and create. And then I'm going to wait for that to load up and then I'll throw it over here and then I'll put the simulator where you can see it. Okay, so we're all set up. Now, what you're gonna wanna do is go into your viewcontroller.swift and we're gonna be setting it up in here. Okay, so I'll zoom into my code so you can see it better. And let me know in the comments if this is too zoomed in, if it's not zoomed in enough. All of your feedback helps me make the videos better and it actually increases exposure to the video. Like if you leave a comment, it's gonna make it so more people on YouTube see it. And that's another reason I want comments. I'm not gonna lie to you and say that's not a reason. But I, I also wanna know what you guys wanna see. All right, now what I'm gonna do is place this comment in here just so you can see it. For those of you who just wanna jump into the course and just learn everything, and this video is not in the course, okay? I actually show you how to do everything in separate videos that are a bit more quality and I show you how to do it straight from the developer documentation. All right, but this course or this video will show you how to do this. So let's go ahead and get started. What I want you to do is I want you to go over to main.storyboard and we're just gonna throw on a map view, okay? We're only gonna be having one kind of view in this, so it doesn't really matter to use programmatic auto layout here. Feel free to do that if you want. Uh, maybe do it after you've followed along in this video just so you don't mess up anywhere. But this is a super simple video, so you, you shouldn't mess up even if you choose to do it 100% programmatically. So go ahead and click this uh, inspector tool up here. Can't remember the attribute in inspector or something is what it's called. And we're going to want to go ahead and we're going to want to click map kit, sorry, map view. So it displays maps and provides an embeddable interface to navigate map content. Go ahead and drag one of those views onto the screen. And then what you're gonna do is just kind of center it there. And I'm just gonna hit this little square with sides down here at the bottom, the constraints. I'm gonna hit all of these. And then you can put whatever constants you want, customize it how you'd like, that's fun. But I'm just gonna do zero, 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 so it's like what you see here in the simulator. Then I'm gonna hit add four constraints and that will constrain it like that. Okay, so now what we're gonna wanna do is build the app to the simulator and we should see a map. It's really that simple, except for it's not really gonna be tracking our user location and there's a couple reasons why. Now, the first reason it's not gonna be tracking it immediately is because one, that's a privacy thing. We need to ask the user for permission to track their location. Very much like what you'd do if you were creating a photo app and you wanted to use the camera, you'd have to ask the user if for permission to use the camera because it's a privacy thing, right? Because the cameras can see what's going on in your personal life. So same thing with your location, that's a privacy thing. And just by law, we need to make sure that we ask the user to track their location. And there's no way around it Anyway, like if you wanted to be mischievous and track their location without having them allow it, there's no way you can really do that. They have to hit allow. You'll see it's not tracking my location, okay? So I'm going to show you how to do that now in the rest of the video. Let's hop over to viewcontroller.swift. And what I want you to do is I want you to actually hit this little uh, 
thing up here, these two little circles, because we need to drag a reference, okay? So let's switch back over to main.storyboard. And you should see something like this. And if you don't, what you're gonna wanna do is click up here until you can get the view controller.swift on the screen, okay? So you see something like this. You probably already know how to do that because most of you are pretty experienced anyway, pretty solid developers out there. So go ahead and do that. And then I'm gonna drag it on with control. So I'm gonna hold control and I'm just gonna drag the map view into the view controller. And I'm just gonna call this map view straight up with a capital V to follow uh, programming uh, convention, obviously camel case. And then what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna want to import map kit because we can't really use it because map, MK map view is not in UI kit alone. So let's go ahead and on line 10, let's say import map kit. And that's all we should need to do with storyboard for now. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit this up here and then I'm gonna switch to view controller.swift and this is all the code we have. So make sure this matches. And if you're getting an error and you can't figure it out, Go ahead and go back into storyboard, delete the map view, put it back on and try redragging it. And if you still can't get it to work, drop a comment and I'll help you out. All right, next thing we're gonna do is we are gonna declare this thing called location manager, okay? And what this is gonna allow us to do is track the user location. And then we will tell the map view that we want to show their user location. So to declare this, we'll say file private let location manager. And this is gonna be of type CL location manager. So the description is the object that you use to start and stop the delivery of location related events to your app. I'm going to go ahead and set that equal to a new CL location manager object. And then I'm going to cl command click onto that and hit show quick help and you can get more information on it. So you'll see it has this section called discussion. And this is a big thing I do in my course is I actually in my new map kit course specifically, I don't do this in any other of my courses, but I plan on doing it in the rest of my courses from here on out. But what I do is I click through documentation. I actually go to the developer docs quite a bit on the website throughout the course. I have separate videos on that. And that's just something I think is kind of a good idea. Let me know if that's a good approach. And if it's not, let me know because I don't want to record stuff that you guys don't like. But basically, what we can see is that we have instances of this class to configure, start, and stop the core location services. A location manager object supports the following location related events. So we can track large or small changes in the location with a configurable, configurable degree of accuracy. Now what this is, is like areas, right? Like overlays, maybe you want to run some code when a user steps in a certain circle or something. And then you can do a lot of other things, right? So I won't go off about that yet, or in this video, you can also hit jump to definition on this and you can see a more code coded layout. And this looks very similar to the layout on developer.apple.com, right? It's just in code. Now, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be saying a request when in user authorization. So let's go ahead and find that method. You'll see that down in here, let's see. We're, we're gonna be using desired accuracy. We're gonna using, be using distance filter. So I'll talk about those now that we're here and we can, I can't see that method I was looking for. But basically, it specifies the minimum update distance in meters. So we're gonna set this to best because we want to, sorry, we're gonna set that desired accuracy to best. What we're gonna set this to is none, okay? We don't wanna filter on the distance. We don't want anything to do with the distance in this video. We just wanna track the location. Now, for desired accuracy, we just wanna get the best possible accuracy. So we're gonna use accuracy best. It might be somewhere in the discussion here, right here, KCL for core location, location accuracy best. And in order to use these properties, we actually have to import core location. So, so I'll show you how to do that in just a second. All right, so dang, my mouth is getting dry. All right, there it is, request when in use authorization. So I'm just gonna read this in my mind for a second, just cause I actually haven't read it in the discussion yet. So it says, if possible, perform the call in response to direct user for location-based service so that the reason for the prompt will be clear. Any authorization change or result prompt will be reflected via the usual delegate callback. So you can see that we can use a delegate with this and that's gonna be something like the KCL location delegate. And that's what I love about documentation is you can just learn a whole bunch just by clicking through these header files. And that's something that you don't really get very easily with some language like JavaScript or React Native. That's a big reason I love Swift is because it's all in Xcode and it's really nice. All right, so 
that was probably a lot of mumbo jumbo. It didn't make a, munch, a bunch of sense to some of you, but maybe it did. And that's just one approach I really like to do when I myself are, are learning is jump into developer documentation and kind of read it. And that's exactly how I show you in the course. All right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to say location manager dot request when in use authorization, that method we just looked at. So requests permission to use location services while the app is in the foreground. So basically if you're like driving somewhere and you want to listen to music, so you switch to your music app, but you still want to get directions to the coffee shop or some junk, you're going to want to have this method called in your app because you want to be able to update location and use location services while they are not using the app because you still want to tell them, hey, you have to turn right here or something. All right, so location manager dot desired accuracy. So just the accuracy is going to be K C L location accuracy best. And then we'll say location manager dot distance filter is K C L distance filter none. All right. Now what we'll do is we'll say location manager dot start updating location starts the generation of updates that report. And then I'll go ahead and command click show quick help here so I can read the rest of that the reports the user location. Okay, so pretty straightforward. This just starts updating it. Now, if we compile this, it's not going to work immediately for two very distinct reasons. First reason is we haven't asked the user for permission to start updating their location. And the second reason is we haven't really told the map view that this location manager has anything to do with it. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's go to our description down here and we should get some some little warning, right? It says this app attempted to access privacy sensitive data without usage description. This app's info.plist must contain an NS location when in usage, when in use usage description key with a string value explaining to the user how the app uses this data. So I'm going to copy that, go ahead and copy that or just type it in. And we're going to go into info.plist and I'm going to hit this plus up here. I can't zoom in the text here. So it's going to be pretty small, but what you're going to want to do is paste that in there in a new item. So all I did was hit that plus up here at the top of the information property list dictionary. And then I pasted it there and then I'm going to hit return. And then you'll see it kind of turns into this whole different thing, which is basically just a plain text version of NS location when in use usage description. Now this isn't going to work straight up because we have to add a value. So what we could do is say, Hey, we need your location to give you directions to the coffee shop. Now that's a little large of a description and that might not look very great. So what I like to do when asking for privacy things is to keep it really short because I just want to get the point over and I want them to hit allow, right? We want them to use our application so that it generates more revenue. So people are using it, right? We can also say something like, Hey, go to the coffee shop. I don't know. We could say something like, um, we need this need your location for directions. Boom. Simple, easy. They'll just read it and hit allow most likely. All right. Now let's go ahead and go back and then let's compile our application and then we should be good to go. All right. I had to text someone back real quick. All right. I'm going to go ahead and hit allow and you'll see it doesn't work immediately. Now, the reason is because we haven't really told map view to do anything. So we'll say map view dot shows user location and we'll set that equal to true and we'll recompile the app and it should be up and running. So I'm just going to wait a second for that to update. I'm going to quit out of Docker. I don't know why Docker is running. I'm not using it right now. All right. Now what we're going to do is we are going to look at our application. You'll see that it's tracking the user location. So that's exactly what we want. Oops, it's lagging a bit. Simulator is a bit laggy. And you'll see it's okay. Point is, it's working. I can't seem to get to the map. I'm just going to kill it and reopen it. But basically, you'll see that it's working 100% the way I told you it would at the beginning of this video. Okay. So that's exactly what we want. And that's all I'm going to show you in this video, except for I want to mention one more thing because some of you might not be seeing this. And the reason is in settings, you just have to make sure. If you hit like deny or something, just go to the app and settings in privacy. So go to settings, privacy, location services, and then go to the map kit setup and just hit while using the app. Now that might have been the problem for you. Maybe it's working just fine. All right. So we're good there. And that's how you use it.
Now, again, I'm gonna be releasing a few more videos on MapKit on this video, but nothing near what's in the course on Udemy. But again, I want to provide free content to you. So I'm just gonna keep updating this channel with more map kit videos. I'm finally out of a little rut I was in and I'm going to be producing a lot more content if you've been waiting for my videos. But again, this is in the description. It's that bit.ly link right here if you want to just type that in. And uh, you can get my course with this coupon code. I always just sell my course at $9.99. It's the lowest price you can sell it on on Udemy. I would put five four ninety nine dollars if I could, but you literally can't. It's so irritating, which is why I might make my own site for selling courses because I want to sell them for five bucks each but that won't be for like another year. So I wouldn't wait for that because it's not gonna happen anytime soon. But anyway, yeah, you're gonna learn everything about MapKit in this video or in this uh, in this course. So go ahead and check it out if you want. And uh, if you wanna subscribe to the newsletter, you can do that, it's down in the description below. I might be sending out free coupons every now and then, but I wouldn't rely on that, that might be rare. All right, anyway, I just released this and I hope you enjoyed this video, I hope you learned something. Leave a like and subscribe. Sorry for plugging my course every 10 seconds, but I just want to teach you MapKit and make some money off it too, just being honest. So yeah, glad to meet you. Let me know who you are in the comments and I'll stop uh, going off. Yeah, <laughs> I'll see you in the next video.